All right, I'm going to do an iPad uh, 10.5 charge port repair. And I've already disassembled the logic board, but you can tell the charge port's all jacked up. So, <sighs> Unfortunately, you have to re replace this whole damn thing. Uh, I mean, you have to take the logic board out in order to replace it. So that's what I'm going to do. A lot of times it's uh, harder to take the logic board off than it is to replace the damn charge board. But... Uh, I did learn a little trick um, in removing these logic boards, um, and that is to use some isopropyl alcohol on all the sticky stuff, uh, and just use your. I use my. I use my little tool like this. I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but this is a little, I put some IPA on this and just kind of scrape down, and it makes it a lot easier to get off, get the adhesive off at least. All right, so not a whole lot to this. Just um, desolder this, and then. Put a new one on. Not too complicated. Just make sure you have these two nubs on it. Where's my new port at? Did I just lose my new port? <laughs> Here it is. So this is the one I just bought. Mobile Centrix. Okay, not a lot to it. So let's just go ahead and start taking it off real quick and see what happens. So, uh,. Uh, I'm tired. I just spent uh, five days skiing Colorado. Um, Telluride. I don't know if you guys have been there or not, but it's an awesome place. Uh, it was fun, and I definitely don't want to come back. Didn't want to come back, but uh, whatever. Okay, so... Not a whole lot to this, really. I just put a little uh, flux on it, and I will blast the hell out of it. Four sixteen degrees Celsius and airflow of seventeen. All right, I'm just gonna tape this down so I can kind of lift it a little bit. So I like to use hot air, and then I just like to grab in the corner and. And just melt away until it is good to go. Probably not a bad idea to actually kind of go through this and let's do that. All right, let's just go through this with our um, tweezers just to kind of mix the lead free solder with the lead head solder so that'll be easier to come off. You can use low melt too, but I don't think it really matters too much. So don't really lift up. Just kind of wait until the solder melts and then gently lift, and it should pretty much slide off. You don't want to tear any pads. It looks like it gets easier as you, if you go under it. There it goes. All right, so that's done. Let's put our new one on. Probably don't even really have to clean it, really. Yeah, I'm not gonna clean it, but I will put some flux in the middle of it. And then basically just use. I like using my tweezers. I think that's the best way to do it.
So just make sure you're doing it the right way. Uh, I've done it the wrong way a few times before, and it really, really sucks. So, let's see. What are we doing? Okay, so just make sure you do it the right way. And then just make sure you align these tabs right here, These this tab right here. Uh, this goes there. And then this one is the same thing. Just make sure it's aligned nicely. And then I'm just going to tack this down just a little bit. And then we will flood with flux again. And then not a whole lot to it. I like to push down just a little bit. Make sure I get a nice solid joint. Okay. Just like that. Probably could use just a little. Well, it's probably just a little too much uh, solder. So I'll just go like this. Uh, phone call. All right. Sorry about that. I'm back. Well, this is not too exciting, is it? No. I don't really need to do this, but I, I kind of want to do it just to make sure that everything is good. Alright, I think that's good. So let's clean this up. What I like doing is just setting my hot air station to pretty low. Uh, 
temperature and then high high uh, flow. And then I'll kind of show you what I'm doing here. And I'm using VS V what is it VS two one three dash A flux, so it's a lot easier to clean up than the NC five five nine. So I put a lot, I flooded with IPA, and then, and then I use a clean Q-tip with IPA, and wipe it down again, and by the second or third time, and then use the clean end. By the second or third time, it should be like pretty good. It won't be greasy or anything anymore. Maybe a little bit greasy, but. Okay, so I think that's good. So, now we test it. So I guess maybe what I'll do is... Well, I th I'm pretty sure this is going to work, so I think I'm going to kind of reassemble it. I mean, reassemble it enough at least. So I can test everything without having to redo it. Oh, this is so boring. <laughs> okay. Let's get this little piece of tape here. This is not going to work. Watch, and then I'm about to like take all this garbage out. Let me do it. Oh, yeah, there's some weird connectors right here. I'm not looking at my scope for this one. Oh, it looks like it's broken actually. Is it broken? No. What the hell's going on with it, man? What the hell's going on with this one? Looks like it's bent or something. Yeah. Definitely don't want to break this. Oh man, that's so delicate right there. Alright, I think that's good, so let's put this back. Uh, we have to double check the other side too. I know you guys can't see it, but. This is not even on, so let's just make sure everything's good over here. Huh. Oh, and maybe it is broken. Damn it. Well. That sucks. Because I may need to replace it. I mean, it's definitely missing on one side, but. Alright, well, let's put some cap on or something on it. I'm sure it holds a little better. Okay, so now we test it. Alright, so every time you replace a charge port, you always want to test the. Um, uh, number one is you want to check the ammeter and make sure it's charging at 2 amps. And well, in this case, it's one amp because it's connected to the computer. So you can plug it into a two amp charger, and it should show two amps. All right, so we can see that it is charging. Uh, not sure if you can see that or not, but let's see. 
so far away. Okay, let's do this. There you go. 43%. You got the charging sign. And then, next thing you want to do is, let's see, check the sound. Both sides. So there's two speakers. So you just want to make sure both sides work. The uh, sounds okay. Okay, I can tell that both sides work. Um, and then next thing you want to do is plug in an iTunes and make sure that iTunes recognizes it. So you can hear the sound of the iPad connecting. So we're in business. And at some point it should say trust. It's installing the driver now, so oh beat. Okay, uh, let's see. I don't know what's going on, but it's going to say trust or whatever. It's going to work because I, I can see it's charging. There you go, trust. All right. So, so after you do all that, you're pretty much back in business. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this up and call this one a day. Okay, there's not a whole lot to this one. Um, thanks for watching. Bye. So I just wanted to say thank you for watching this channel, and I wanted to promote our online micro soldering course. Um, we have it hosted at udemy.com and it's at this point it's four hours of video instruction um, the reviews are pretty good um, and we talk about everything from the basics uh, of, of an iPhone logic board um, and then we have a section on ZXW tools um, we have a little section about how to set up your hot air rework station, your micro soldering um, station, and how to use diode mode. Uh, the third part is the three most common repairs, which is no touch, no backlight, no charge. And the fourth part is all about data recovery. So, um, if you go through our website, it's a hundred bucks. And some people say that learning online is not the best way. Of Doing things, or you can't learn micro soldering online. I beg to differ. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I started watching YouTube videos when I first started about three years ago, and that's how I learned it. Um, and not only that, but you know, you go to a live course. Some people like live courses, but not everybody has three thousand dollars to spend on a live course, right? So, um, and then yes, you're right. You can go to YouTube and watch all these videos, um, but you're not gonna when people make these videos they don't go from A to Z they usually start from somewhere in the middle because they assume that you watch something earlier on or one of their earlier videos so this course is all-encompassing it has everything from A to Z um, to help you get started in micro soldering and we are adding stuff um, on a weekly maybe monthly basis and we're, we're gonna just gonna keep adding to this thing and um, so if you want to get started, just, I mean, you could also take a class, but, uh, you know, to get your feet wet, I think this is the best thing to do right here. And I vouch for it. Um, thanks for watching the video. I was also going to say, um, in order to buy it with a discount, $50 discount, just go to microsoldering.com, click on store, and then it's going to be the first item on here. You click on buy at Udemy, and that will give you the $50 off. Thanks.